Overnight, those new threats from North Korea promises on state television to reciprocate a thousandfold for what it calls America's villainous actions against our country and people, warning that if the U.S. thinks it will be safe because it is across an ocean, there is no bigger misunderstanding than that. KUAM News team coming to you live from Tumon, Guam. Here you can see the tourists uh, here along the beach, just as they are every day, a very popular tourist destination for Asia and many in America, also home to uh, the Air Force and the Navy as well. And here's what's been developing here out of the territory. Guam taking center stage in a war of words between the U.S. and North Korea. That all happening this morning right now. It's just after 9 a.m. local time here on Guam. Local leaders, we're here, are preparing a statement, but island residents waking up to this news that North Korea is looking at the possibility of launching a missile aimed here at Guam. The threat following President Donald Trump's announcement uh, that uh, hours earlier warning North Korea that any threat to the U.S. would be met with, quote, fire and fury. KUAM also reaching out to the government officials, the governor's office, as well as Guam Homeland Security. We have yet to hear back from them as well as get any response on what preparations may be underway after that threat being uh, made and coming our way this morning. The can down the road for 20 years. There's no place else to kick it. There will be a war with North Korea over their missile program if they continue to try to hit America with an ICBM. He has told me that. I believe him. And if I were China, I would believe him to and do something about it. You can stop North Korea mm -hmm. militarily or diplomatically. I prefer the diplomatic approach, but they will not be allowed to have a miss missile to hit America with a nuclear weapon on top. And to allow them to do that is really abandoning in homeland security. Two cancel personal instructions at my command, quadrant 557. hurdles to overcome as Steve has said they have to perfect the miniaturization of the warhead they got to see if their re-entry vehicle works we don't know how what the payload of this test was so depending on the weight it could go further it could go less but this is here this is here people have been warning about the North Korean ICBM for 20 years they've been barking wolf about this while the wolf is at the door this is a very real threat to the United States <laughs> Vice President is in Asia doing the four-stop tour, and he said basically the U.S. is running out of patience, clearly a message to North Korea. You have a Navy fleet that is sent into the Sea of Japan right now. Have you ruled out a military strike? I don't want to telegraph what I'm doing or what I'm thinking. What happens? I hope things work out well. I hope there's going to be peace. But, you know, they've been talking with this gentleman for a long time. You read Clinton's book. He said, oh, we made such a great peace deal, and it was a joke. You look at uh, different things over the years with President Obama. Everybody has been outplayed. Uh, they've all been outplayed by this gentleman, and we'll see what happens. But I just don't telegraph my moves. Thank you. Thank you. We'll handle North Korea. We're going to be able to handle North Korea. It'll be, uh, it will be handled. We handle everything. Thank you very much. What happens if North Korea launches another missile? We'll find out. For 20 years, it's this kind of thinking that's allowed uh, North Korea to have dozens of nuclear weapons, not just one. They're gonna have dozens of missiles if somebody doesn't stop. They'll have a hydrogen bomb one day if somebody doesn't stop them. I like Secretary Tillerson. His job is to find a diplomatic solution. I hope he can. But when he says North Korea is not our enemy, tell that to Otto Warmbier's family. So I think this whole approach that they're talking about has failed. It's time for a new approach. We need to let China know that we will pick our homeland uh, defense over regional stability if we have to choose between an ICBM in the hands of the North Koreans and a conflict uh, in the region. We're going to choose the conflict to protect the American homeland. And quite frankly, President Trump has no other choice because everybody before him has failed. To the toughest sanctions ever passed by the UN Security Council.
against North Korea, which could cost the regime nearly $1 billion a year. These sanctions will cut deep, and in doing so, will give the North Korean leadership a taste of the deprivation they have chosen to inflict on the North Korean people. Sanctions in the wake of North Korea's alarming progress in its nuclear and missile programs. Kim Jong-un launching a second intercontinental ballistic missile just nine days ago. A missile potentially capable of reaching as far as the eastern U.S. It is now Secretary of State Rex Tillerson's mission as he travels across the region to ensure all parties, especially China, adhere to the sanctions in hopes North Korea finally comes around. Well, the uh, best signal that North Korea could give us that they're prepared to talk would be to stop these missile launches. Um, you know, we've not had uh, a, an extended period of time where they have not taken some type of provocative action uh, by launching um, ballistic missiles. And that will indeed be the big test, but whether the North Koreans stop the tests or not, the U.S. will give the sanctions time to bite before taking further action, but Secretary Tillerson said there is no time frame for that. Developing this morning, North Korea says there is no bigger mistake than the U.S. thinking it's safe across the ocean. National Security Advisor H.R. McMaster says President Trump has been briefed on military options regarding North Korea. It's an incredibly strong day for the United States. It's a strong day for the United Nations. It's a strong day for the international community that wanted to send a message to the North Korean regime that we were done. The, de the time of talking is over. We made that very clear on Monday, and the time for action has happened, and now it's time for North Korea to decide where they're going to go. Uh, what you saw the Security Council do was a unanimous uh, vote that basically banned coal, lead, lead ore, iron, iron ore, banned seafood, um, stopped all new joint ventures, stopped expansions of joint ventures, had multiple sanctions designations, and we gave them basically a kick in the gut with a billion dollars of sanctions that are going to start, they're going to start to feel right away. It's, it's going to be very strong, and it's time for North Korea to realize we're not playing anymore. North Koreans lining up to watch state-owned TV, threatening the U.S. with a thousands-fold revenge for what they call villainous U.N. sanctions, warning it's a mistake for Americans to think they're safe. President Trump talking for an hour to his Secretary of State at an Asian summit today. After Rex Tillerson delivered a message to North Korea, stop testing missiles, then we can negotiate. North Korea's shocking breakthrough in a test 10 days ago, a missile able to reach as far as Chicago, has alarmed the world. That plus what U.S. officials call unusual and unprecedented submarine activity by North Korea, which hopes to develop sea-launched missiles as well, producing a diplomatic win for the White House, while in Washington talk of the potential need to plan for military options. There's nothing like the threat of a ballistic missile landing on your homeland. But you have to look at what North Korea has done. This is a country who has taken all of its revenues and not given it to its people to feed um, where they're starving, but instead has put it towards an irresponsible nuclear program where they're trying to show their muscles. So what we basically did was um, kick them in the stomach, told them to stop and said, we're not going to put up with it anymore. And the ball is now in North Korea's court. They have a big decision to make. They can either respond by pulling back and saying that they're not going to be a part of this reckless activity anymore. China said that sanctions would put a lid on the uh, nuclear capability of uh, North Korea. 
uh, China was also confident that North Korea will come to the negotiating table. But you know what? North Korea has just reacted to the sanctions just moments ago for the first time, condemning the move, calling them a violation of sovereignty. It also a promise and action of justice. What action of justice really means, we don't know. We just know it's probably a retaliation now. They're believed to be capable, of course, of hitting the U.S. We don't know if they will do that. As you know, uh, the international community has been trying to get Pyongyang to negotiate, but that has been to no avail. Pyongyang has been resistant. To clarify your thinking, the United States has to take prudent military planning into account.